Well, good morning out there in Nettie Land. Well, this is kind of a surprise visit for me. You may not think so, but Fred and I are on a little holiday. It's been kind of fun. We just got home with our trailer down to California, to our California home. And, um, well, we had a wonderful camping trip on the way home and camped in snow, well, in our trailer, and a little bit of rain, but mostly sunshine. And we had a great old time. Listen to some books on tape. We had one night when there was no, no internets. Well, can you believe it? <laughs> we made it. <laughs> you know how many times Fred and I were discussing something and we thought, well, we better look that up. And we, oh, so many times <laughs> we can't do that. And you don't want to carry a whole encyclopedia in your trailer and of course the encyclopedia that well we just gave it away but most encyclopedias that you can get a hold of you know they don't know much about the internet so who cares anyway I wasn't going to get on I was just going to do a repeat of one of my other Easter videos and even maybe one of my Easter sermon natties. And of course, if you don't know, if you watch the videos and don't know that I have a podcast, tune in to Sermon Eddies. You can tune in and download at your favorite podcast provider. That's Sermon Eddies. S-E-R-O, no, excuse me. S-E-R-M-O-N-E-T-T-I-E-S. And um, you can go to anchor.com and look that up because I'm, I'm broadcasting from there, and but I, I'm on most of your broadcast providers. So, you know, Apple and, you know, bananas, <laughs> apples and bananas. Well, anyway, I, it occurred to me that maybe I just can't let this one go. That, you know, it'd be nice to be on vacation. But honestly, a message for Easter is a little bit more important than you know, unpacking the trailer. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not procrastinating. I'm not trying to get away with anything like I usually do. But, you know, sometimes it's, you're just called to put aside what you're doing to do something more important. The little nudge I got was looking at Facebook and there was a wonderful article on Facebook that so described the way Nettie likes to teach about love and my feelings about following Jesus. Now I say following Jesus rather than being a Christian is because, you know, well, Jesus wasn't a Christian. <laughs> I am, but that's because now I follow him. And I, I think we get misconstrued about what, what being a Christian means. It really simply means following a philosophy and believing in somebody who believed in us, loved us so much that he showed us through sacrifice. Um, what what he meant, he, he lived up to his words. And although so many don't understand that and so many don't believe that, some people have a different way of showing their love. And um, this is not a judgment about any religion, but sort of it is. Because I think religion has been the one thing that's gotten in the way of being Christ-like and being Christ-like is a wonderful thing. If you didn't believe in the death and the resurrection, if we just put that to the side, which, you know, I, I can't, but if you put that aside, you, you couldn't do any better in life than to live a life as humble and loving and gracious as Jesus. And he had a simple message about that. But in the past maybe 10 years, and you know, it, it started with some pretty uninformed or maybe not uninformed, but there were some people trying to use religion that started a little tea party the base religion, the extreme religion that goes out of its way 
to teach a punitive faith. And I don't want to get into the politics of it because I don't think that this is really new. I think this has happened throughout the years. And as much as I'd like to do an Easter Bunny hop hop kind of funny video like I've done in the past, I really want to get serious about taking time this week, which is in the Christian faith is called Holy Week. This is when we remember the last days of the ministry of Jesus, which lasted only three years, but made this huge impact on the world. People are still trying very hard to be as good as they can, to be as gracious and loving and humble as Jesus. It's really hard. We can't do it. We, we really can't. We've proved it. And in fact, sometimes I feel that maybe we're like a stubborn child who, you know, you know when they don't think they can be very good and they want to be good, but they can't. So they're like the worst they could be. <laughs> I'm talking about toddlers. Well, I was talking about toddlers, like terrible twos. But, you know, they say that if you don't go through your terrible twos at two, Eventually, you're going to go through them, whether you go through them at 2, at 20, at 42, at 72. So I'm talking about a lot of adults who right now are going through the terrible twos. Doing anything in the extreme to make faith and belief punitive. If you don't believe like I do, you're going to, you know, date... H E double toothpicks or H E double honey sticks. <laughs> well, you know, faith starts with yourself. Faith starts in your heart. And it starts in your heart because you were born of love. You can't tell me differently. I know too many children who are so gracious and good and kind until they're influenced by others. We all started from that pureness. And what we've done is bring some pretty harsh ways of seeing love into existence. And some of our churches are the worst. I am not opposed to going to church because I go to church. I love the fellowship. And I like the music and, you know, coffee hour with donuts. But you know what makes a good church community? It's those who uphold one another, who encourage one another, who give others hope, who are there in the tough times who follow the teachings of Christ and how we are to be to one another, loving one another as he first loved us, putting him, his way of living, his way of being, his desire for the world above all other. That's loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. When you put it into that perspective, it's not about following somebody to be cultish. It's about following somebody and loving somebody, a God who just teaches love. If you're loving God, if you're loving Jesus with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, you are loving others. That's, that's how you love God, is by your actions and by your intent to love others with your soul from the deep bottom, so much so that you're willing to sacrifice self to help somebody else. With all your mind, using that mind to understand that sometimes loving others is saying no, not enabling, getting others help, but doing it without judgment and with all your heart, putting everything you have into it to be good, and to act out in goodness and kindness. Wow, what a message. That is the message 
that Jesus died for. And so, you know, Nettie just really, really wishes that she, that I, could be that good. My, my uh, ministry is to teach others how to love, even in the hard times. And although we get those lessons in church, we get, we get so many varied lessons. And, you know, some from the Old Testament, and it's all good. The history of all of that is all good. And you can go to church for that. You can. You can get in with a group, small groups, and, and really discuss what does this mean for you. But for Nettie, I'm in the ministry of healing others. And the best way to heal is to love others. The best way to help others heal is to be there for them and love them through things. And, you know, churches support that for the most part. But you must align yourself with an organization of lovers, not of judges or haters. And I, I'm going to be talking a little bit about why I believe this and read to you this article I heard from, um, from a pastor who shared it today on Facebook. And for Sermonetti's people, I'll be right back. And for video watchers, I had to say that for Sermonetti's because you know, we take a little break. But for you, I'll be right back. So here's the article. This is, um, well, I don't know. Oh, it's written by Steve Garness Holmes. I got to give him credit. I don't know who he is. And maybe I should look it up, but, you know, I'm so excited to share this message. And I thank um, Pastor Becky for sharing that. She's one of my friends who kind of really gets it. As a pastor, she gets this better than some people that I know. And, um, and this is a pastor from my past who, who you know, lives in California. And I go to church in Oregon. And those pastors kind of get this too. <laughs> but not everyone that I've ever, you know, not not every church I've gone to could really teach this. Here we go. Jesus wasn't starting a new religion or even criticizing an old one. He was teaching a spiritual practice, the practice of radical kindness and trust in God. That's all. That's it. Jesus' teaching and ministry in a nutshell. Sounds nice and benign, huh? <laughs> well, but if you practice radical kindness to everybody, including the poor, the sick, the outcast, foreigners, incarcerated, sinners, enemies, everybody, well, it will overturn all of society. So, yeah, religious and political authorities had reason to get rid of him. Holy Week reminds us love is powerful and love is revolutionary and people with worldly power will resist it. But love will win. Love will win. I say that all the time, love wins. And we pray for that all the time. And I, I bet you, if, if you're like me, that Easter and Holy Week feel different this year. You know, the Easter Bunny, you know, I, I wish we could put him on a different day because right now we need so much unity. So many, well, we need ways of, of organizing and coming together and, and encouraging each other and, and understanding the depth of love that is required of us to be good human beings. It, it's, it's a lot. 
but it's not that hard. We have to be conscious. We have to be aware. We have to turn off the internet. You know, go camping if you must to somewhere like we did where at least there was running water. <laughs> well, there was electricity too, but it didn't get us anywhere. Not to the internet. The quiet space that we neglect, the quiet ponderings and the quiet discernment that often slide by because we have to do the dishes or we have to call a friend or, you know, whatever it is. We all do it. We need them. We need those back. And they need to be a top priority. I mean, I talked about number one priorities in last week's sermon, Eddie's, and, you know, raise your hand if you listened. <coughs> That's what I thought. Anyway. We have to prioritize how we can judge. You know, how did he put it? He says, but if you practice radical kindness to everybody, including the poor, sick, outcast, foreigners, incarcerated, sinners, enemies, everybody, well, it will overturn all of society. I think, I think the... The word is practice. Nettie talks about it all the time. And it, that's good because that is somewhat practicing this part. You know, loving with all your heart and your mind. I'm sharing what's in my mind and my heart with all my soul. I mean, I, I don't know how many people listen to this, but I always think about the, you know, what is it, the butterfly effect? If only one person listens and starts practicing, they're going to affect somebody else. That's the way ministry works. It doesn't have to go viral. You know, at first I thought, oh boy, wouldn't this be great if it goes viral? Blah, blah, blah. I had all these things in my head. What would happen? It doesn't matter. You see, it doesn't matter because it's my calling. And my calling is to practice radical love, radical forgiveness, being radical about not judging. That one's the hardest for me. I don't know, it's just bad practice. It, just, you know, all my life, you know, remember in high school where you'd sit and gossip and just judge people? You may not have thought you were judging, but we were. We're just trying to be cool. Ah! Well, I want to make radical love cool. That's kind of my dream. That one by one, people who need to hear that, the way they're judging others and taking rights away from others and killing others, taking over lives from a place of pure evil. I can't not talk about that. This week, trying to celebrate the fun side of Easter after church, you know, it doesn't even sound good to me. I want to gather with family and be with them and talk with them and hope, with all hope, that they go and talk with others as part of our dinner, you know, as part of our dinner conversation. How do we help others through this time of fear and war and, and you know, unfair politics and wondering what's going to happen tomorrow? That's not to be our concern. We're not to worry. For even the least of us, even the least on earth, even the birds are fed, right? It's so hard. When we're inundated with, with news of war and mass shootings and, you know, I don't even have to list it. You know, everybody knows what's going on. But we have to continue to believe 
that love will win. We do. It's up to us. If you're not believing that love will win right now, go back and listen to a bunch of Nettie's. You can email Nettie at NettieFitzandPitley at gmail.com. I'm going to put it right there on the screen. Ask me a question. Put a question on YouTube. You can find Moments with Nettie at YouTube.com. Moments with Nettie, N-E-T-T-I-E, -E, that's on the screen. You can go to my website, MomentsWithNettie.com. That's on the screen, too. And, you know, I'll put that in the information in Sermonetti's underneath the, the description of this, this uh, podcast. You see, even the silly, even the silly videos I do, because I am a comedian. I happen to be a comedian who loves love. And my ministry is using whatever I've got to get the message out. So you might have to scramble through some of the videos to get some of these messages or listen to sermonettes. Most of those are serious little sermonettes, not a big old sermon, but a little sermonette. Some of them are longer, but I mean, they're not a formal religion. It's a message, a message that needs to get out. You know, camping out this week, I've been thinking of Smokey the Bear. <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. Oh, Smokey, he's getting a little modern now. I don't, I don't think I like the way he dresses. <laughs> well, that's judgmental. Smokey, I love you no matter what. Why did I mention that? Because only you can prevent. Well, not forest fires, but... Only you can prevent evil from taking over, from darkness to prevail. One, one step at a time. Call yourself out when you find yourself judging. Call yourself out when you find yourself fearful. Find out what that fear is. And remember, fear is the basis of all things that aren't love. Like, if you're angry, you must be afraid of something. Find out what that is. You know, work, work from a place of love. And when you know it, you know. When you snip at somebody, you know there's something there that you're afraid of. You know, work on a daily basis to prevent your heart from changing negatively. Work hard to put out the fire of hate and judgment and, and embarrassment and oh, whatever. self dagger well, whatever it is, when you call yourself names. You got to prevent that by finding love in everything. Finding joy in everything. Finding, finding kindness and being grateful all the good things that represent love. Whenever you feel negative or angry or fearful, you know what? Play opposite day. <laughs> you got to find the opposite and find out what will make you feel a little more joyful, a little more kind. And don't ever forget to look at those who are not kind to you. Those who are needing to try to take over democracy or wanting to still enslave people. You know, there's something wrong with them. And, you know, we're not born that way. And that's where you start. When you can understand why somebody might be doing what they're doing. You don't, you don't have to go in and be their counselor. But you have to stop and think. Something terribly wrong has entered their heart and their mind and their soul. From there, with a heart of compassion, you can choose to pray for them or think about them, or hold them out to God. But it kind of puts a damper on the hate and the rejection. 
because you practice radical kindness to everybody, including the poor, the sick, the outcast, the foreigners, the incarcerated, the sinners, the enemies. How do we, how do we love Russia? We just choose to love and that takes work because we know love wins. We've got to go there. We do. It's up to us. It's up to us. It's up to you and those you touch. And remember, this is like lighting one little candle. If everyone lights just one little candle, what a bright world this would be. Take your candle, light it, take it to the world, light someone else's candle. Be the light so others can shine. But be the light strong enough so others can see it and hear it. Be a first responder in love with that light. That's our job. That's how love wins. Blessings this Easter. I pray for you and your heavy hearts and that you will be the light to others as long as you live. Always remember, Nettie loves you. Bye-bye. Don't forget to show me a little love by subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, and sharing with your friends on YouTube and Facebook.